You are welcome to Christian Singles Podcast. My name is Olu Shegun Moku Olu. And in this episode, I will be speaking on what I titled Signs That You Are Desperate to Be Married. Signs That You Are Desperate to Be Married. As a child of God, you should not be desperate for marriage. Marriage is the will of God. Marriage is the plan of God. Marriage is about God. It's not about you. This is the fundamental truth that every child of God must understand. Man never thought of marriage. Man never even knew that he needed a wife. It was God who said it is not good for a man to be alone. Likewise, the woman was not looking for love. She was not even in existence. And God said, I will make for him a suitable helpmate. So it was God who created the woman, not for love, but as an helpmate to the man. That means God brought the two of them together in order for them to accomplish the purpose of God. Now, so if marriage is about God, why then would you be desperate? And what are those signs that indicate and tells that you have become desperate? And it's very wrong for you to be desperate. Because the scripture says that be anxious for nothing. It says do not worry about tomorrow. Why are many people concerned about marriage? Because they worry about their tomorrow. They worry about their menopause. They worry about having children. They worry about meeting societal expectations. They worry about somebody seeing them tomorrow and asking how how is your wife how is your how are your um how are your children how is your wife you know all of those things they think about it and they get worried but jesus said uh the scripture says rather be anxious for nothing being anxious is a sign that you don't trust in the lord it's also a sign that you have idolized marriage in your heart marriage has become a god in your heart as a child of god you have to get to a point in your relationship with God where nothing else matters. Whether you are married or you are not married, you are not going to compromise, you are not going to become depressed, you are not going to be miserable in life. So let's quickly run through some of the signs that show that you are desperate or you are anxious to be married. One, compromise. When you begin to compromise, because of marriage, then you are desperate. When somebody says, if you don't have sex with me, I'm not interested in you. Or someone wants to even initiate the relationship with sex. There are men out there today that they, they give you an impression that until you allow them to sleep with you, they're not even going to press further about relationship. They've got to sleep with you first. Or somebody is in a relationship with you and is asking for sex. And because, because you are afraid of losing that person, you are saying to yourself, where will I find another person? Then you give in. You forgot that God created that person and that person can be put into the grave any moment. So when you begin to compromise, when you begin to do um, shameful things just because you want to stay in a relationship, you want to be married, is a sign that you have become desperate and anxious. Also, if you are scared of losing anybody, if you are scared of losing anybody, let me say this to you. The only person you should ever be scared of losing in your life is Christ. There should not be anybody that you have placed on a pedestal in your heart that you are so scared of losing that person that you will rather put up with, with anything than to lose that person. There are, there are sisters that will develop high blood pressure, even brothers. You will start developing high blood pressure because you don't want to lose somebody. The person is threatening to go and it's affecting your health. When that happens, it's a sign that you are anxious or desperate to be married. Number three, if as a sister, you are helping a man to propose, you are helping the man to propose. The man has not proposed. You are asking him, so what are we doing? Why are you not talking about marriage? 
So who are we now? You know, just because someone is checking on you regularly and then he didn't call you for a while, then you get offended. And then you say, why have you not been calling? He is not in any relationship with you. He doesn't hold you a call until a man has opened his mouth and said to you that he wants to marry you. You are not in any relationship. I've seen situations where a sister thinks that she's in a relationship just because she's now acquainted with this person. The person has not opened his mouth to say, I want to marry you, but she has assumed it and then believed that they are in a relationship. As Christians, as believers, we don't, uh, we don't operate like that. For when you become suicidal or depressed because of breakup, when you become depressed, when a relationship breaks up and then you become depressed or you are thinking of killing yourself. I had a terrible story of a young lady who killed herself because her supposed boyfriend broke up with her. As believers, we don't even have boyfriend, girlfriend. We, what we have is courtship. Even if a day to your wedding, somebody breaks up with you, it is not the end of the world. You're not going to kill yourself and go to hell for eternity because that person broke up with you. What you may not understand is that that person may have a shorter life to live. You don't know tomorrow. Leave everything, leave everything to the hands of the Lord. You know, somebody was, uh, a lady, uh, a lady who is my friend was telling me about a relationship she had in the past and that everybody just didn't like this person. And so she just knew that she was going to f face a brick wall and did not go ahead with that relationship. So she eventually got married to someone else and they both relocated to, to the United Kingdom. Then one day she gave me a call and told me that that person she was she wanted to marry at that time is now late. And what came out of my mouth is, you could have been a widow by now. God knows how he works these things out. So why will you be suicidal or become depressed just because somebody says he or she is not mar getting married to you? Number five, when you cannot come out of a wrong relationship, you know this relationship is wrong. You know this relationship is not right, but you can't come out of it. It's a sign that you are, you are anxious. It's a sign that you are desperate to be married. Otherwise, why would you want to kill yourself in a wrong relationship? Number six, when you begin to get involved with married men. When you begin to get involved with married men. I remember a sister who started getting engaged sinfully with a married man. She was called, she was warned, but she refused. Eventually, she got pregnant. And then the man said, well, he's responsible for the pregnancy, but it has nothing to do with her. And I'm just wondering, a young lady, beautiful, who has her life in front of her, why is it that you will go and mess up your life with a married man? Do you expect him to throw away his wife and bring you in? Or do you want to be a second wife? Why would you want to live your life like that? Complicate your life and, and spoil your life. Why would you want to do that? When people do that, it's because they are, they are desperate, they are anxious uh, to be married. Number seven, when you begin to consider somebody with a uh, very great age distance. Now, I will be one of the first person to tell you that age doesn't matter, as in God can lead you to marry anybody. But, you see, when a, a 25-year-old girl is thinking of marrying a 70-year-old man, then that becomes suspicious. And I'm not saying something that is not possible. Because I have seen it. I have seen it. I've seen a lady in her, uh, in her late 20s get married, married rather to a man of about 70 years old. I've seen it happen. You know, when you begin to consider somebody with a different like that, you see, usually what happens is that you've given up on yourself. You've looked down on yourself. You felt that, well, I can't find anybody. I better just grab this that I have. That's what happened. 
Now, I'm not saying age difference in itself is the problem. But the way you process the thought, the, the mindset behind such a relationship is a, it's just a sign that you are desperate, you are anxious, you've idolized marriage in your heart. You just want to be in somebody's house. All right, so please watch out for this. Uh, number eight, when you, you can't ask the person you are courting questions, you are in courtship with somebody, and this happened to, to both, either male or female, and you are scared of asking that person questions. You can't ask, what work do you do? How do you make your money? How is your relationship with your parents? When did you give your life to Jesus? Why do you go to this place? What do you do here? You, you are afraid to ask questions. And so, because you don't want that person to get frustrated and say, sorry, I'm not doing it again. Your questions are too much. You are afraid. You are suspecting that this person is not faithful. You are suspecting that this person is wayward. But you don't want to ask questions because you don't want to offend him or her. When, you're, when you do that, it's a sign that you are desperate to be married. Otherwise, you should be able to ask questions. Number nine, when you start engaging in chatting with all manners of men, your life is just about men. Your life is just about women. You just keep chatting. If, this, if, if we pick up your phone, it's all about one man or the other, one man or the other, one man or the other. Because somehow within your mindset, you are thinking, well, let me have lots of them so that at least I have chances of getting one that will marry me. Your life just revolves around the opposite sex. You've got to be careful. It could be a sign that you are desperate or anxious to be married. When you have two people in your life at the same time, as a Christian, it is criminal, it is sinful that you are involved with two sisters at the same time or two brothers at the same time. It shows something is definitely wrong with you. It is ungodly, it is not biblical, and so you should desist from such uh, practices. Number 11, when you try to tie somebody down with pregnancy, that means, one, you first of all have to fornicate. Because in process, you must get engaged sexually with that person. And then, two, you are ready to conceive. Why will you do that as a child of God? Why do you want to bring children into this world in a context that from day one, they are disadvantaged and their life is made miserable. Why do you want to bring children into this world that way? It's a sign that you are anxious, you are desperate, and you probably don't know what you're doing. So you've got to be careful. Number 12, when you tolerate nonsense in courtship, when you tolerate nonsense, you see, I'm using the word courtship because I'm teaching biblical marriage. In the world, they use its relationship. I'm using courtship because for us in the kingdom, a uh, proposal is what initiates relationship. Until somebody says, I want to marry you, and you say yes, you don't actually have any relationship. But the day you say yes, what you have is courtship. That means two of you now start planning towards your wedding. So when you tolerate nonsense, it's a sign that you are desperate. Somebody will beat you. A man will raise his hand and slap you, and you are still with that person. Somebody is violent, talks to you anyhow, causes you, abuses you, manipulates you, but you just keep tolerating it. He can mess your life. You know, I remember some time I was, I was so, I was young then, and you know, we had this neighbor. They were young people. They were in the university in those days, and this lady came to the flat and. They beat her. She was crying. Everybody had. She was screaming and so on. You know, looking back now, I just kept asking myself, what, what was she doing with this type of guys? What was she doing? Why will you tolerate nonsense upon your life? It's amazing that you will see some, some women completely, um, completely disgraced, completely treated like a nobody. And yet, they are not going to quit that relationship. I've seen it, you know, and it's, it just looks terrible. They just keep hanging around that person, you know. 
So you've got to be careful. Or number 13, enslavement. You know, when you start enslaving yourself for another person, you literally become the slave of that person. That person can control you and make you do whatever, make you act against your will. When you begin to do that, it's a sign that you are desperate. It's a sign that you are anxious to be married. Uh, number 14, when you want to marry somebody you don't know, you know, you will think that nobody will do this. I want to say to you, a lot of people are doing it. Somebody is abroad and they, they will recommend somebody and then they will meet and bam, marriage. They don't know each other. They don't understand each other. They don't know each other's background, philosophy, thinking, way of life, understanding of what marriage is, understanding of how to run manage marriage. They don't know any of those things and they get married to that person. Only to get married and discover that, wow, they are completely from different planets. And then trouble starts. I've seen situations where a man was wondering, how could the woman be so selfish that she would not want him to sleep with other women? You know, because for the man, he came from a background where women tolerate it. And so now he's wondering why the wife is, is so furious about it that what's the big day about it why is she selfish you know he he even considered the lady to be selfish that's what happened when two people who don't know each other gets married you just meet somebody and bam within a few weeks you just want to get married you don't know that person or the person is in another state even if you are in the same country because you are chatting on phone because you are chatting you are talking you feel you know that person and then the next thing is that you plan wedding, everything virtual, and then a week you now meet each other, and then that is, that is it. When you are doing that, it's clearly a sign that you are desperate to be married. Or number 15, when, when you begin to engage in what I call perilous journeys, perilous journey, you meet somebody on Facebook as a lady, and then you are the one that will now travel. To go and visit that man. If a man wants to marry you, he is the one who should come and talk to you. But you are risking your life. You, some of you engage on this type of journey. You can't tell your parents. You can't tell your siblings. Maybe one or two of your friends will know about it. Or maybe nobody will know about it. And then you will not go and stay. You will not go and stay in the house or in a place where a man is that you are meeting for the first time. You know, a lady had to travel from Lagos to Abuja in Nigeria to visit a man she met on Facebook. And they've agreed that they are not going to have sex. And then when she got there, the man wanted to have sex and she said no. And the man was like, what do you mean? How could you come and spend like a week in my house and you are thinking we're not going to have sex? And she had to call her friend that night and say, please, can you help me find a place that I can sleep in Abuja? You know, thank God that it was not even somebody who will use her for rituals or kill her. It's a sign that she's desperate uh, to be married. Number 16, when you begin to send nude photos and videos, nude photos and videos of yourself, and believe me, men do this also. Because you meet a lady online and she's abroad, you want to go abroad, she's asking for your nude pictures, she's asking for this, and you are foolish enough to send all of those things to come on video. You don't know that that person is recording you on the other end. Let me say to you, many times where you are doing nude video, the other person on the other end is actually recording you and taking your pictures. Many of our phones have facilities that if you call me on video, I can record it. And I can, I can play it, you know, because it has happened to me that a lady called me one day and said she wanted to show me a book. She, she messaged me that she wanted to show me two books on video that she wants me to look at them and make recommendations. So I was busy then. I said, OK, let me quickly give you one or two minutes. So she called me on video. And um, as soon as I picked the call and we greeted, the next thing was that pump. She, she put her breast out. And she was showing me her two breasts. So now, my face is on the video. So if she was recording it, I wouldn't know. Just imagine if she releases that video and 
she begins to say, look at this man of God that is preaching against sin and so on. He's doing it. How many people will believe me? In fact, I know there are people forever, they will just believe that, you see, he's just like them. He's, the, all, these, all these people who claim to be men of God, they are all liars. They are all perverse people, you know. So what I did that day was to take my face off it quickly, and then I also took a record of that uh, video, and I kept it in an email. And then the message she sent to tell me she wanted to show me a book, I kept everything, I screenshot it, I said, who knows what will happen tomorrow. At least I will have something to present as evidence. You know, so when you, when you engage in things like this, you are just disgracing yourself. Many of the leaked photos, videos, pictures of nude ladies and so on that are surfacing all over online and, and even guys, they are between two people who felt they trusted each other and this person can never do this to me. The person may not even intend to do it. He may record it to just keep, but his or her phone may get spoiled, take it to a repairer. The repairer downloads some of those things. You know, anything could just go wrong, you know. So when you begin to do that for someone, it's a sign that you are very uh, desperate to be married. Number 17, when you are ready uh, to marry a stranger, I've said this along with the other one the other time, that perilous journey. When you marry somebody that you don't understand their life, you know, a stranger is not just somebody that you have never seen before. I'm talking of somebody that you may even be neighbors, but whose life you really don't know. Don't marry somebody like that. When you do that, it, it could be a sign that you are, you are desperate to be married. Or when you want to marry somebody that is not born again. As a child of God, you know that this person is not born again. You yourself, you know. You know. And then you are still going ahead. I've seen, you know, I've, I've seen sisters that they are engaging in sexual sin and they, they are still saying, well, sir, he told me that he's a pastor. He said he's a man of God. So I said, so you, what do you think? And they said, sir, I, I don't really know. I said, why would you not know? How can a man be fornicating with you every day? And you say you don't know whether he's born again or not. Of course he's not born again. Of course. The Bible says if a man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have Pass the word, behold, all things have become new. Say, behold, all things have become new. Bible says, how can we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin continue daring any longer? So how can somebody who is in Christ be practicing sin? And then you are saying, you're not sure. The fact is, you know within your heart, this person is not saved. This person is not born again. But you just want to go along with it. The sign that you are desperate to be married. Uh, when, number 19, when you marry somebody whose doctrine you disagree with, <laughs> this is very critical. You know, it's not just sufficient that, well, he's a child of God. So, no, there are some fundamental things. For example, there was no way I was going to marry um, a lady that believes in praying for her enemies to die. I believe that those kind of prayers are satanic. They are from the pit of hell. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. I'm already in Christ. My life is secured in Christ Jesus. We don't pray, die, die, die prayer. So if, if I meet a lady, even though she's feel, she says she's born again and so on, but she believes in those kind of things, we can't work together because we will have conflict in the marriage. You know? So when you have that, or, or somebody that all her life has been attending churches where they preach about money all the time, and so her mindset, her own understanding of Christianity revolves around money. Success, Christian success, everything is defined by money. I will have problem with somebody like that. I don't want to marry someone like that. So she may have given her life to Christ truly, but we, we disagree strongly on fundamental doctrinal issues. Somebody who still believes in feet washing. I don't believe in anything called feet washing. Jesus only gave an example that we should be servant to each other. He didn't say that we should be washing each other's feet. Okay? So if you believe in that, then we have fundamental uh, differences. I believe as a man that when I'm praying, I should leave my hair uncovered. I believe that as a man, and I practice that as a man. And I believe that according to the scripture, expressly stated in the scripture, for the sake of angels, not, it's, it has nothing to do with cultural issue, that 
the woman should cover her head. You know, so if you disagree with this, we can't work together because we will be having issues. You know, if you were not my spouse, that's a different thing. I'm not going to bother. But if you are my spouse, some fundamental differences will cause us conflict. Now, when you know this and you you want to go ahead, I'm not going to marry somebody, for example, that, play, that prays to an idol under whatever any guys. If you say, if you say, Holy Mary, pray for us. Now, please, what does that mean? You can't tell me you are honoring Mary. You are saying, Holy Mary, pray for us. That's what you have said with your mouth, that Holy Mary, pray for us. Now, that is wrong. Mary is dead. We only pray to Jesus. There is no other name that we should pray but the name of Jesus. Everybody in the scripture, nobody anywhere ever prayed in the name of Mary. So it's a, it's a clear fundamental issue. You know, it doesn't mean I hate you, but we will have issues because it's a clear fundamental doctrinal differences that we have. So when you know this, that this person, I won't even be able to go to the assembly is attending when we get married. Then why do you want to marry him? Because I've seen couple that they have problems because as soon as they get married, they have issues with the assembly they'll be attending. Now, when you know this and you still want to go ahead, uh, it just shows that you are desperate. Then, of course, number 20, when, when you spend your life fasting, praying, sowing seed everywhere just to get married, that's a clear sign that you are desperate. When last did you, were you desperate for souls that are not saved? When last did you, were you desperate in the place of prayer for revival in the church? When last did you pray for the return of Christ? When last? But you are everywhere you go, you go to camp, you go to Shiloh, you go to a mountain, you go to all that you are praying for is a spouse. If they ask you to sow seed into this ministry, you quickly uh, sow that seed into that ministry. When you do all of those things, it's just, it could be a pointer. So the fact that you are desperate, you've become desperate. So watch out for those things. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't say that. I'm not saying you cannot willingly give to a ministry. All right? You can. I, I met a sister sometime with Sai talking, and we discussed issue of marriage, and so she was still single. Okay? And I started counseling her at, at a point of her own free will. You know, she asked for my account, and she sent some money uh, to me. And not long afterwards, you know, she... She met somebody, and she just recently had an uh, introduction, and she will be married. She will be getting married in a few months time. Now, it's not because she gave me money. It was God working in her own life. Okay, so you can bless people. I'm not against that. You, God can lay that on your heart. But to be going about sowing seeds so that you can marry or giving money so that you can get married is just a sign that you are desperate. Okay, I wouldn't collect any money just for the sake of. Uh, you want to get married because I, if I spend that money, I'm just enjoying your money. It's not going to turn to marriage for you. Okay? But you can give money to people sincerely from your heart and God always will reward you for, uh, for giving and reaching out. So fast for things that promote the kingdom of God. It says seek first the kingdom of God. But you are seeking first your own kingdom. Your, all your spiritual investment it's just for you to be married. Be very careful. It could be a clear sign that you are desperate. Or when you become deaf to everybody's counsel, everyone is telling you this marriage is wrong, this relationship is wrong, this is, but you will not listen because you've just made up your mind. It's a pointer that you are desperate. Lastly, when you give up on God because of man, when you give up on God because of a woman, you want to backslide. You don't care again. You are tired of waiting on God. That's a clear sign that you are desperate. My prayer is that you will receive grace to trust in the Lord. Please make up your mind that whether you marry or not, you will serve Jesus. And nothing, nothing will separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. But I assure you by the word of the Lord and by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that the Lord will speak for you. The Lord will show you mercy and he will lead you into a marriage that will fulfill his own purpose on the face of the earth. My name once again is Olushegun Mokolu. We have a free marriage course. If you are interested in it, just write to BibleLoveHelper at gmail.com. You can enroll. You will learn how to get married. Uh, 
taking that course is completely free. Now, if you want to be receiving this podcast, all you need to do is to send your request to us on WhatsApp. The number is plus 234-818-615-7852. Please remember to share this message with other believers. For those of you listening or watching on YouTube, please remember to subscribe and to share this message. The email and the number will be in the description below. Thank you for listening. Until next time that God help us to bring another word to you. Stay blessed and may God bring his promise of marriage to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Amen.